Welcome to Yes Catholic, the place where real people share their real stories and realize it is all God's grace on the move. I'm your host, David Patterson, and every week we hear a new guest share their story of how they came to give their yes to Jesus and his church. So let's get started. Sure. Yeah. So like David said, my name is Kelly Clangelo. I'm very, very grateful for this invitation to be here. Uh, I've been doing youth ministry for the last several years. Um, I started when I was in grad school in Syracuse, New York. I was working in a suburb there. And then I moved to Tallahassee, Florida and spent uh, several years there uh, leading youth ministry and evangelization at a parish. And I literally just moved to Steubenville, Ohio about two months ago. Um, as their new dean of students. So I've been involved in ministry uh, for a while now. Um, It's a privilege to journey with people, just to be with people, to accompany them, to share life with them. Um, And I'm, yeah, I'm just kind of, kind of stoked about, you know, I've had many, many different opportunities that God has blessed me with, uh, specifically like traveling to different dioceses and different conferences, speaking at the Steubenville Summer Youth Conferences, Um, that somehow God has called me to, uh, to just share my story, share who I am, and just share the love he has given me uh, with other people. So that's a snippet, but I'm sure you're going to learn a little bit more of this interview as well. Absolutely. No, I love that summary. Well, we're going to get to know you a little more with the rapid fire. I'm just going to rhyme off some questions. You ready to go? This is youth ministry. You know know what's going on. Uh, Sure, sure, (laughs) sure, sure. I'm ready. All right. Describe yourself as a child in three words. Oh, okay. So I would definitely say... One, adventurous. Two, creative. Okay. Uh, So I love like just doing and trying new things. And then three, I would say cooperative. Or at least I always remember like that being on my report card growing up that I was cooperative. (laughs) I love that. That's awesome. Uh, Would you say you're a a morning person or a night owl? Definitely night. Um, Actually, some of my friends say, uh, there's Kelly and then there's Kelly in the morning. So I'm definitely a night owl. Uh, do you drink coffee? Yes. For the morning? Just when you, oh, yeah. when you wake up after the night owl thing? Yeah. 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 So I, I, I do drink coffee. Um, I'm actually only like one cup max. I know some people like drink okay. a pot and stuff. Uh, <laughs> my parents always told me growing up, I did not need any caffeine. <laughs> Got lots of energy, right? What would you say would be your go-to order at a coffee shop though? Ooh, definitely a vanilla latte. Okay. Yeah. That's that's like my wife's go-to order, vanilla latte. She enjoys that. <laughs> yeah. And if it's like a fancy coffee shop, it might be like vanilla latte with a little lavender. Oh, I haven't tried that. That sounds good. Okay. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? My location. 100%. So many people are saying that. Is it inspired by Padre Pio? Like, what's going on here? <laughs> I, I'd like to think it's inspired by Padre Pio, but it's like so many times I would like to be in like five places at once, you know? Um, yeah. So I think that'd be super cool. Just the the desire to be able to multiply yourself so you could accomplish more than dreams. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I, feel, I feel that for sure. Um, if you could travel back in time to any era, thoughts? Yeah. There? Um, I would say before COVID for sure. Um, But I think everyone would. Right. Um, But gosh, I, um, I think it would be super cool. Like early 1900s. Yeah. Any, Um, any reason I know it's rapid fire, but yeah, no, no, no. I, I just think like, you see like these black and white, like old movies that, that just have so much like character and, I think what people like experienced back then, it's completely different in a lot of ways how it is now with like technology and iPhone and things like that. So I just think like, and and even like before like iPhone and technology, I guess you could say like the 90s or the 80s, but I just think it'd be super cool to live at a very earlier time. I love that. Uh, Going back to coffee, if you could have coffee with any saints, who would it be? Teresa of Avila, for sure, 100%. Saint Teresa of Avila? Uh, yeah, I love St. Teresa of Avila, uh, one of the fem- female doctors of the church. She, right. um, holy, but she had a little spice to her. So, like, I think that's why I'm really drawn towards her. I love that. Uh, name a song that makes you really happy. Eye of the Tiger. Eye of the Tiger pumps you up, right? Eh? <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, I have a tiger. When I hear that, I'm just like, I'm ready to go. Like I could, I feel like I could run through a brick wall. I love that. That's great. 
All right, last one. If you could ask God one question. Oh, um, on a silly note, I would want to know, like, what's the, like, favorite pizza topping, you know, like his favorite pizza topping or like favorite flavor ice cream, but like on more of a serious note. Yeah. Um, I think just like how, because often I reflect on like the passion, the cross, like the journey um, that he made for all of us. Yeah. And it's just like, you hear about like the suffering he endured, the pain, everything he went through. Like how, and like, you know, we have like, we know the context, like theologically, right? Like he's God, right? But like, how, like mm -hmm. how can someone do that? Um, so I think just hearing in his own words. I love that. Well, friend, you flew through the rapid fire. Let's kick things off with an opening prayer and then we'll get you to share a story. All right. All right. Yeah. In the name of the father, the son, the Holy spirit. Amen. Amen. Come Holy spirit. Teach us how to pray. Lord, I thank you so much for Kelly. And I thank you, Lord, for everyone tuning in now and who will listen in the future. Lord, I just pray that you would send your Holy Spirit to be with us. Give us the grace just to open wide the door of our hearts to you, to say yes. Lord, help us to not be afraid of totally trusting in you with our lives. Lord, I just pray that you would help us to decrease so you would increase. Lord, let everything we discuss just give you glory tonight. And we make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. St. Teresa of Avila, please pray for pray us. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right, let's dive right in. Where does your story begin? Awesome. Uh, so it definitely begins like when I was born as a baby. No, just kidding. Um, so yeah, so I would really say like, my story kind of begins in a lot of ways when I was in middle school and high school. And the reason being like, you know, obviously I'm becoming more aware of like who I am. I'm starting to kind of like break away in a certain sense from my family and have like my own responsibilities in school. Um, I'm being involved in like athletics and clubs and things like that. Um, and really that's where I started to understand my faith, but at a very elementary level. Um, and to be honest, I was very concerned in middle school and high school, like what the world told me, <laughs> um, yeah. what my friends told me, um, just the influence of the culture. And, you know, sadly I bought into that. I bought into the lies of the world. I bought into what other people told me was going to make me happy um, and I made a lot of poor decisions. I made a lot of mistakes. Um, and all of that led me down this spiral to being miserable, to feeling this like ache of emptiness, this ache of like, I wanted more, but yet I had really everything material that I could ask for. Um, I had friends. Um, I was a really good athlete. I was very well known for that. I did well in school. But I always had like this gaping hole in my heart, like something was always missing. And I would try to fill it with what the world told me would complete it or what the world told me would make me happy or would satisfy the deepest longings of my heart. But again, it was empty. Again, there was something missing. Again, it felt like there was this hole in my heart. And it wasn't until... Uh, I was invited to go to a Steubenville Youth Conference, so the summer after my junior year of high school. And honestly, I really didn't want to go. I wasn't the youth group kid. I never really went to church except mass with my family. Okay. Um, it's not that I didn't believe in God. I just, you know, wasn't actively living my faith. I wasn't right. interested in it. Um, and then for whatever reason, I had a really good friend who was going to the youth conference. So I was like, I guess I could go, you know, like whatever, it'll be fine. Yeah. And kind of like, you know, I was going cause my friends were going and then like, I get there and it's all these people singing about Jesus and it's all these people with like their hands up and it's all the these beach people. balls going in the audience. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like people who are like really happy and like smiling 24 seven. And I'm like, where am I? Like, what is this place? 
and again, kind of just there, like, whatever, it doesn't really matter. I'm here because my friend was here. And then, of course, like the big Saturday night adoration. I'll never forget, like, Jesus is like right in front of me. And like, for the first time in my life, I felt like he saw me, he knew me, and he still loved me. Because, you know, growing up, it's like, you're special, Kelly. God loves you. There's a plan. There's a purpose for your life. And it's like, yeah, whatever. Like, okay. You know, like it was in the back of my mind, but like at that moment during Eucharistic adoration, it's like God acknowledged me like personally. And there was literally like something in my heart that just shifted. And I was really just so overwhelmed by like God, like this big God in front of me and this God who literally saw like, I know what you've done and I still love you and I'm still going to come after you. So I went home from the Steubenville Youth Conference and I was different and I made a commitment to literally live my faith daily. So like that meant going home from that conference, I had to change the group of friends I was hanging out with. Um, I had to recognize like, my actions mattered. So like being kind to someone, um, recognizing like I'm going to live for heaven and not live for myself or not live, you know, for this unholy Trinity of me, myself and I, like mm-hmm. I'm a great athlete. Um, so I started going to daily mass. I started reading the scriptures. I started praying. My parents said to me, who is this person? (laughs) Um, Because literally like there was something that shifted and, you know, obviously like God transformed my heart in a really mighty way. And I wanted to hold on to that. And I wanted, um, I wanted to change my life. Um, And I don't want to say it was easy. Like I went home and like everything was different, but I went home and I made a commitment and I really tried to live my faith. I started going to the youth group that I told my parents I would never go to. Um, I started. And this um, time you actually wanted to go, right? And I wanted to go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And I started like praying with teens at my youth group. I started just getting really involved. And then next thing you know, like I was sharing like my faith and my witness at different confirmation retreats and stuff like that. And when I went to college, um, I'm so grateful because I had that year of youth group and retreats that had gone on. I went to college, like knowing who I was, knowing that I was a beloved daughter of God, knowing my life had purpose Um, knowing I wanted to go to heaven and that's a goal of mine. So knowing like what I had to do in order to live my life rightly ordered for Jesus to keep him at the center. And I just got really involved um, in college, um, just sharing my faith. Honestly, like with anyone who would listen to me um, for getting, getting involved, uh, we had campus ministry. So I went on a bunch of mission trips. I helped lead retreats. I went to the local parish and helped with youth group. And then in my summers off of college, I was like a summer missionary at like a diocesan run uh, camp parish event thing. So I just got really invested. And then when I was graduating college, I just knew it's like, I wanted to do some type of ministry, but also knew like, um, you know, I had a commitment to further my education as well. So I pursued graduate school. I got my master's in counseling, but at the same time I became a youth minister. I was super involved in a parish. And then that led me to move to Tallahassee, Florida. And, um, I led a uh, youth, youth ministry for a really large suburban parish and evangelization. Um, and then, yeah, my path has, um, taking all sorts of turns, um, but God opened the door for me to speak at a lot of different, really cool youth events, women's retreats, uh, parish events, parish missions, Advent missions, Lent missions, and God somehow has just opened the door for me to really um, share on more of a really public level of where I was, what God has done, and how I'm trying to live my life for God now. And um, I just moved to Steubenville about a month and a half ago um, to serve at Franciscan University as their new dean of students. So that's kind of a a little bit of a nutshell of uh, my ministry life and what God has really done to speak to me and just speak the truth truth, um, of him in my life. I love that. What would you say God has taught you um, being in ministry about your relationship with him? 
Yeah. It's a loaded question, but yeah. They're coming up. Um, so. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think that no matter, like, I guess one of the biggest things is like, God has always said, like, Kelly, just be you. Like everyone else is already taken, just be you. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause I think sometimes we have the tendency like, wow, that guy, he is really good at video games and like he can communicate with anyone um, or like that person is really funny. So I think we have the tendency to compare ourselves or be like, I want to be like the guy who plays a ton of video games and then you can talk about his faith. Or I want to be like this person who's like really hilarious and like a stand up comedian. But I think God has always said like, Kelly, just be you. Um, so I definitely think like teaching me to be comfortable with who I am and that like, he looks at me and loves me. So I don't have to be anyone else. Right. And then I would say like probably another really big thing is be holy. Um, so like, I think one of the most attractive um, qualities someone could have is that they're holy, um, that their holiness is contagious, that everyone wants to know like what they know and who they know Um, So they can have what that person has in a certain sense, like just that deep desire and passion for our Lord. Um, So, you know, being in ministry, it's not easy. Um, It's beautiful, but it's not easy. It's not without struggle. Um, It's hard. Um, It's a lot of time. It's a lot of investment. Um, But I think uh, sacrifice. Oh my gosh. So, so many things, but I think really just staying close to our Lord, um, recognizing like, it's me like it's you he wants to be an authentic and then just that desire to live for him that desire to grow each day in your holiness yeah i love that just that call of seeking first the kingdom Mm. and everything else is going to be given you know like that call to become a saint right yes yeah like the ripple effect the echo of that is powerful you know Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, he says like, we shouldn't have the desires of the world. Right. Um, and if we do like ask him to purify us, um, because it's him who should be our greatest desire. And it's when that it's in the right order, when we seek, like you said, seek the kingdom first, um, everything, everything else will follow. Yeah. I love that. Um, one of the questions that came in from the Yes Catholic community earlier in the week was any advice on how I can find fulfillment in my parish? Any thoughts there, Kelly? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I would say like, if you go to, um, if whatever parish you go to, if you're like, oh, well, they don't have this or they don't have that, guess what? They got you. So like you could help like start that or like um, th- the biggest fulfillment you'll find is by sitting in the presence of Jesus or the biggest fulfillment you'll find is by attending mass. Um, I think sometimes like, you know, we have such a diversity of parishes. Um, We've got the smaller parishes, the more rural, the urban, the suburban, all sorts of dynamics of parishes. But first and foremost, like seek to conform your heart so much to Jesus in the tabernacle that you'll be able, um, you know, to connect with others there. Um, get involved. Um, if there's like a Bible study, and even if it's like a bunch of old people who go, go and be the young person if you're a young person. <laughs> or if, um, or if you feel like the youth group, oh, all they do is dodgeball. Go and be able to like share about the word or share about your faith. Um, I just feel like there is good in every parish. Um, there is beauty, obviously, in every parish. Um, and our commitment, our investment, being intentional, um, would, would be qualities to like, just start and really help to grow that parish and just, you know, be the person God is calling you to be and that leader God is calling you to be. Mm. I love how, when you shared after Steubenville, right? Like you got connected and leading confirmation retreats and whatnot. And I love how you said it was like through that time that going into college, I knew who I was. I think there's something there in that when we serve, the Lord is almost communicating his truths 
through us, but it, it's like speaking to us in a beautiful way as well. I don't know, like when I was planning talks for Life Teen and confirmation and stuff like that, it was almost like I felt like the Lord was speaking to me as I was like speaking to the young people. I don't know if you can relate to that at all. Oh, absolutely. I, a lot of times, like when I'm giving talks, it's like, I think I need to hear this message more than the audience needs to hear it. <laughs> Um, that and then too. also like recognizing like different seasons of life we're in um we could hear the same scripture but it just hits us differently depending on that season of life we're in yeah um so yeah i think like as i prepare talks or as i prepare and plan retreats it's like wow like I'm actually like getting a lot out of this and then I'm able to like learn how to articulate it um, in a particular way, you know, to the environment or to the audience, you know, that, that is before me. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm super like grateful for that. Um, and again, it, it's interesting to think like people are asking me to talk about my faith or like talk about a scripture or share a story, whatever. And it's like God is doing something in it for me at the same time. Yeah. And that's just God's grace moving, right? Which is beautiful. Absolutely. Absolutely. Speaking about God's grace, um, what has really helped you in your prayer life? Mm. Silence. <laughs> and I say that with like a little bit of a sigh because silence can be really tough sometimes. Yeah. Um, but I think... I've really learned to appreciate silence uh, because often, you know, I'm on my phone, I'm texting, I'm calling someone, I'm, you know, in the middle of whatever daily interactions I'm having. So I'm constantly busy, constantly on the go. So then like what's been really important is just like sitting before the Lord and just recognizing like that he is there. And sitting in silence and allowing him to really speak to me rather than me speak to him or like name my petitions or what I'm thinking about. That that stuff is great too, but just like being in silence, um, I've really come to appreciate um, in a really profound way in my life. I love that. Yeah, not easy. A lot of people actually struggle with that from what I understand. It's like <laughs> just being silent with your thoughts can be a challenge. Oh, yeah. And I, I, I will be, to be completely honest, sometimes it's still a struggle, sure. um, but I think growing in that. So like, if you've never sat in silence, what I would say is try it for two minutes and yeah. that's going to feel painfully slow, but then like slowly increase to five minutes and then 10 minutes, like build yourself up Set a timer. and then it just, yeah, yeah. And it just becomes this like beautiful thing. And again, just really focusing on like, during this time of silence, like I'm just going to allow the Lord to speak to me. Mm. Mm -hmm. I, I remember I watched a, a video done by Word on Fire, I believe on St. Catherine of Siena. And they referenced a quote that she said that God is closer to us than water is to a fish. Mm. And just that concept of like, um, when we pray, we're not really calling on God to come and be with us, but it's actually like entering into the awareness yes. of God's presence before us. I don't know why mm. that's helped me in prayer, but like when I'm in silence, just to be like, God, I'm entering into the awareness of your mm. presence that is already before me right now, you know? And it's like, I don't know. I find myself yeah. not in awe of that, you know, like it's. No, absolutely. And just like the water and fish, like I'm a very visual person. So Me like too. visualizing, like, holy cow, like that is insane when you, we actually think about it. Um, and then like, it, it kind of reminds me. So like one thing that has really, really helped me in my prayer um, is what I call like our, the pirate's prayer, right? Um, so it's just like a four-step prayer to really like have me enter into like a holy hour um, or just like a, a intentional time of prayer. So, and you could actually think of it. And I was like, cover one eye because I'm like a pirate. Right. And just say R, um, but a is acknowledged. So again, it's just like simply, simply acknowledging like that God is present. Right. Um, then the first R is relate. 
Um, and that's just relating to God, our feelings, our emotions, our thoughts. Um, and then the, the second um, R is receive. So like just sitting in the presence of the Lord, like receiving, like, God, what do you want to give me? Knowing that we have a good, good father who wants to gift us, who wants to give us a gift. And then the, the third R is respond. So sometimes the Lord might put out on your heart um, to maybe respond, um, say yes to something he's asked of us. Maybe it's to make an apology to someone in our family, like whatever that is. But just, I call it the pirate's prayer. Um, it's, it's really well known. A lot of people know it, but that's really helped me also like enter into my prayer as well. Yeah. I love that, that respond, that call to action. You know, where you're taking like what you've received, God's grace, and then going forward. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, last question of the night. What is your hope for the future of our church? It's a loaded question, but I love asking it. It is a loaded question. I think that that we would see a church fully alive um, and fully alive, like living the sacraments. So like recognizing like, the Eucharist source and summit of our faith. Uh, And like, when I say fully alive, I mean like joyfully going to mass. So not like kicking and screaming and maybe you'll always have that with kids, but like not people going through the motions, but people actually like going up to receive our Eucharistic Lord, like just with that awe, with that reverence. Uh, One of the saints said, like, if we truly understood who we are about to receive, we'd be like kneeling and crying um, every time we go up to receive Holy Communion. So I think just like recognizing the beauty of our faith as Catholics, the power of the Eucharist. And then also like when I say church fully alive, like a church that is like able to pray with people outside of the church halls, outside of the context of the sacraments, but literally like in a grocery store, you would just see people praying. Um, A church that believes in miracles, not not miracles that happened 2000 years ago, although they did happen, it was super awesome. We hear about in the scriptures, but like a church fully alive that would actually like believe, you know, as Jesus said in scripture, like we have that power to heal. Um, so a church that would be so believing that they would have this expectant, expectant faith. Um, and then I just think like a church that rejoices together, um, a church that celebrates with each other, a church that is kind of like, um, you're, you're in it together. You're on this journey together. Um, and that means something when you're a family. Uh, So definitely like my hope is to see this church that's fully alive, that's thriving, not just surviving, that recognizes the beauty of the sacraments and really that you're out in the secular world, sharing, praying together, supporting one another. Just this, this sense of accompaniment on the journey towards home, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. Well, on that note, Kelly, I just want to thank you so much for your yes to Jesus and his church. It's been such a gift to be able to have you share your story, take your time. If people want to connect and learn more about what you've got going on, uh, I understand you're doing parish missions and lots of youth conferences and whatnot. How can they, how can they reach out if they want to learn more? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, I, I'm definitely on social media, but I would say the best way is just to check out my website and send me an email. And it's, it's really easy. It's just my name, kellyclangelo.com. Yeah. Um, yeah. And David, I just want to say thanks for inviting me and just thank you for your yes too to this ministry. Um, you have something really good going. Thank you so much. That means a lot. Would you be able to uh, close in prayer tonight? Yeah, absolutely. In the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for this time. Thank you for David. Thank you for this ministry. We pray for all the viewers, all the people right now with us live and all of the people who will uh, who will listen or tune in. Just pray that you continue to bless them. Bless our parishes, bless our churches, bless the people we're going to meet this week. Help us to give you glory in everything that we do. In your most holy and precious name, we pray. Amen. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the ministry, please share with others, post about it on social media, or please leave a rating and review. 
To catch all the latest stories, you can follow us on Instagram at yes.catholic and visit our website, yescatholic.com. If you have benefited from Yes Catholic, please consider joining our Patreon community. Visit patreon.com slash yescatholic. I would like to thank our current patrons for your ongoing prayers, support, and contributions that have helped Yes Catholic reach thousands of souls all over the world each week. 1 Peter 3.15 says, Always be prepared to make a defense to anyone who calls you to account for the hope that is in you. You have a story. Don't be afraid to share the good news of how Jesus Christ has moved in your life with a family member, friend, or colleague. Give Jesus your yes every single day and watch the ripple effect of the gospel. Join us next week. The journey continues right here at Yes Catholic.